Welcome to Component 25, Patient-Centered Care, Unit 9, Patient-Oriented Data Analytics, Lecture A. The objectives for this lecture are to compare and contrast advanced methods of patient engagement, including social media, apps, patient portals, patient health records, and other tools. We'll learn how to format information for maximum patient understanding and employ effective methods for engaging with patients regarding data analytics. So what is the best method for engaging with patients? Is it your electronic health record patient portal? Is it a smartphone app? Social media such as Twitter, Facebook, texting, or email? Should you try to use a personal health record? Or is it simply paper? Ultimately, the best method for engaging with a patient is twofold. The first is, what is the goal of the patient engagement? And what method does the patient want or does the patient have access to? Not all patients have access to smartphone apps. Not all patients will want paper. So you must have multiple methods of engagement. Let's look at the first one a little more closely. What is the goal? Overall, there are three goal-oriented methods for patient engagement. The first one involves providing the patient with information. So you are simply giving them information. You don't necessarily expect that it is going to change their behavior or that they are going to take some action based on that information. You simply want to provide them information. This could be a leaflet or a brochure. Think something like immunizations. We now see organizations like the Mayo Clinic developing videos related to different activities that go on in the office or online. For example, the Mayo Clinic has a YouTube patient experience video series that explains for patients who are coming in for surgery what will happen to the patient in the pre-op period what will happen in the operating room so that the patient can watch the videos and feel like they are very informed about what's going to be going on with them. If you're providing the patient with information, it might be a patient portal from the EHR. This is where you are simply going to provide them with their lab results. They may or may not do anything with them or you are going to provide them with information on how to make appointments or other information related to their care. And the same for social media, where you may simply be providing the patient with information, not necessarily with the expectation that they will do something with it. The second goal-oriented method is to provide the patient with information and then encourage them, the patient, to take action. So for example, this might be a pre-visit form for the patient to complete. This could be something where you ask them to complete a form, which may highlight areas that you would like for the patient to ask you about. You might have a web-based decision aid for the patient. You see this sometimes, especially with patients who have chronic illnesses such as diabetes. Or it could be something like a smartphone app that is providing feedback to the patient. So for example, if you think about wearable activity monitors where you are asking the patient to use the activity monitor, hopefully with the expectation that it will help them increase their activity levels. And then the third goal-oriented method is where you provide the patient with information. You want them to take action with the ultimate hope that it will improve patient-provider communication. And this is perhaps the most difficult one. Several of the options that provide this level of goal-oriented method for patient engagement include option grids and decision boxes, which are specific tools that providers can use to engage in shared decision making with the patients. It could be texting or email, as long as it is bi-directional, so that the patient can communicate to the provider and the provider can communicate back to the patient. But it could be anything that supports effective patient and provider communication. And of course, these goal-oriented methods are for the patients as well as the patient's significant others, so friends, families, and others who are involved in caring for that patient. If you are using these goal-oriented methods, how do you maximize the understanding of the patient or the patient's significant others? This requires some work, 
So the first thing for you to do as a practice or provider is to ask the question, what are your patients asking for? So what are the things that you receive the most questions about from your patients? This is the first hint as to what they need in order to increase their understanding. In order to also maximize understanding, it is important that you internalize the concept that less really is more. Many times, providers with extensive knowledge about topics can lose the patient in a tidal wave of data and information. And you really need to focus as a provider on what's the most important message for the patient. What do you really want the patient to pay attention to? You may have some patients who can go beyond that into more detail, but the majority of the patients need to know the primary message that you want them to walk away with. It is really important that the information must be relevant and meaningful to the patient. If you can't get the patient to change their behavior, it really is a Sisyphean task. Behavior beats technology every single time. What that means is, it doesn't matter how fancy your technology is for interacting with the patients. If the information you are providing to them is not relevant and meaningful, it will not change their behavior. And ultimately, that's what we are trying to do. Help the patients change their behaviors. The information that you are providing to the patient must be understandable at a glance. It can't be so complex that it takes a graduate college degree to understand it. And the patient or the patient's significant other needs to be able to drill down for detail if they so desire. A very important point is to be careful about the medical terminology or jargon. So for example, if you were talking to a pediatric clinic population, instead of using the term upper respiratory infection, use the term cold so that the patients can more readily or easily understand what it is you are trying to talk about. So patients and data analytics is an important topic. We now have big data. We now have mounds and mounds of healthcare data. And patients have access to data technologies they've never had access to before. So how do we help our patients with the issue of data analytics? First and foremost, you need to remember that it's still about communication between the patient and the provider or the patient's family and the provider. There are many times where data, data analytics, and information was not able to help the situation because the parties involved were simply not communicating. Communication helps the patient feel more connected, and patients who feel connected often participate more in their care, so they become active participants in their care. They are much more likely to adhere to their prescribed treatment regimens, and they exercise increased self-management of their conditions. So you can have the best data analytics in the world. You still need to work hard to communicate fully with the patients, so that they can feel connected to the provider team and then become an engaged participant in their care. How do we hopefully help the patient pay more attention to the data? First and foremost, again, listen to the patient and or their family. What's important to them? What are their goals in life? Why do they want to remain healthy? What would motivate them to be healthy? Present the data in an understandable format, both visually and verbally. So again, limiting the use of medical jargon and then also keeping the visual presentation very understandable. If you want the patient to pay attention to the data, you need to be sure to engage the patient and family in the decision-making process. Simply handing them data and expecting that they are going to be able to sift through it and understand it on their own and come to reasonable decisions is not effective. And finally, you need to treat the patient and family and their values and beliefs, whether or not they are your values and beliefs, with respect. This concludes Component 25, Patient-Centered Care, Unit 9, Patient-Oriented Data Analytics, Lecture A. In summary, effective patient engagement and communication is respectful. It uses the patient's preferences for communication, both language, the technology that's used, along many different characteristics of the communication. You need to use the patient preferences. And it is clear and understandable, limiting the medical jargon, making it very visually understandable, and it's relevant and meaningful so that the patient wants to engage and wants to participate in their care. Thank you for your attention.